Not everyone agrees with all parts of the Senate bill. Well, this bill provides much needed funding to address PFAS in local communities. It also creates a polluter loophole that will restrict DNR authority and our spills law. The current spill law requires anyone who causes, possesses, or controls a hazardous substance that's come into contact with the environment to take action to restore it. They're then required to report it to the DNR. The DNR then takes action and investigates it to make sure it's taken care of. So they're like the police of environmental stuff. Polluters should be responsible for paying for the profound damage and the health risks that their actions and messes have caused. But the new bill would reduce the DNR's authority by limiting the requirement of certain properties to test for PFAS. The DNR would also not be able to prevent or delay projects based on there being PFAS contamination unless there are substantial risks therefore making it more difficult to respond and protect communities with contaminated water. Routinely, our legislative processes have been polluted by moneyed interests and corporate lobbyists who routinely have traded our people's health protections for profit, and we see that in this element of the bill. While some disagree with the bill, others believe it will help the DNR focus their limited resources. That language on, on page 12, lines 4 through 7, really hits the sweet spot that says, yes, we, sh we should do, we should require testing in brownfield cleanup programs where we know that there was actually uncontained PFAS there. The funding for PFAS testing and infrastructure upgrades would likely come from the $125 million, which was approved by the Legislature Budget Committee back in May. We want them to make sure that the money they budgeted goes to the municipalities. DNR officials say they can't specifically comment on what changes would happen if the bill is passed since it's still being discussed.